Hello everyone and welcome back to RuneScape. Today we're going to be getting two mini games that I don't particularly like out of the way. Uh, well, not completely out of the way in the second one's case, but for this first one, yes. Because we're going to be doing All Fired Up to completion, which previously I've had to do part of it to get the Ring of Flames and Gloves of Fire, probably the other way around on the Fire and Flames. But the point is that now we're going to get the Inferno ads because I did power through the final levels of fire making needed by burning a bunch of U-logs on a portables world, which was not bad. It's probably spent like 400k in logs or so, give or take, which is not serious for the amount of levels it was, which was like five levels. So that's good. Uh, I kind of want to get the Inferno ads now because bonus XP weekend is coming up and with a lack of time to spend money buying any supplies, because I was thinking, you know, maybe next double XP I'll actually do summoning or something, but there's not enough notice here. Jeez, I thought I had months. Uh, so yeah, I'll probably just be doing less money intensive skills for the most part. So maybe we'll work on woodcutting and fire making with some curly roots and the Inferno ads, which I've always liked as a cheap way to train up fire making while getting a slight bonus of woodcutting XP which we desperately need. Uh, what else? I also got 89 construction. That's all there really is to say about that, working on that all 90s goal. But anyway, so, I have, in preparation, added logs to all the beacons. For the most part, they're maple logs. One has U logs, because randomness, and I think the last two we do are oak logs. Other than that, that's that. I've given macaws to eight of these guys, because there's only eight of them, but I didn't have to do extra stuff to do it. I give a lava eel to one of these guys, but uh, I already had the lava eel in my bank for months and months. I don't know if I had it for that or for something else, but I gave it to him. So, yeah. There is an achievement for giving them all macaws. So, you know, we're eight of, eight of them there out of what, like 12 or so? Something, something like that. All it does is lets you see the status of all of them from ones you give the macaw to, which shouldn't really matter, but it was nice to at least have that to make sure I didn't miss one, because it'd be really annoying. We only have 15 minutes and 45 seconds from when I light this beacon right here to light all of these. Now, you can do it in under 10 minutes. I didn't have to use maple logs, but I didn't... I know I'm not going to do it the fastest way. I don't have all the teleports with me. And uh, I'm going to be talking and making dumb mistakes and trying to do too much at once. Plus, I've not done this since I don't know how many years ago. So, yeah. But, yeah, we're going to do this. Let's just go ahead and get started. Whatever. The worst thing that could happen would be me messing up and then having to start this whole episode over. It would suck. Let's not do that. 830-something experience for lighting that. Very minor number in the grand scheme of things. But anyway, so we gotta run down here. Go up here. So anyway, yeah, this week's update was nothing major. There was like basically no patch notes. Bizarrely, there was patch notes for the Halloween event which got removed with this update. So they fixed bugs in the same update that removed the bugs entirely, which is slightly bizarre. Um, there we go, I thought it wasn't gonna light for a second. We can teleport to the earth Alter to save a few seconds. Uh, other than that, there, there was a few. Just literally just a few patch notes that weren't completely irrelevant. Waste of time. And then they added a ton of achievements, which I've already earned, I think, two of them. One for upgrading your Wicked Hood, I think. And although there is a glitch with that one not properly unlocking, so we might not actually have it. But in addition to that, we also got one for bank standing for an hour because I was doing portable um, fire making training. So I was at the bank for over an hour tossing logs in a fire. So I got an achievement for that as well. Okay, these stupid things need to stay away. I wonder if that's why they make you light it from there. Just so that they'll leave you alone. Who knows? Anyway, there's another one over here. Okay. He almost turned right when I pressed the button, which was annoying. I should really just use a keybind for that, but I'd never remember to use it. A lot of times when I'm recording, I have my hand off the keyboard, unless I'm actually, like, skipping through dialogue. Uh, there we go. There's always that slight delay, and I'm worried that I didn't click it. But I did. Alright, cross the wilderness wall. 
This next one, I don't know how anyone can see it since it's right up against buildings. And again, this whole network is kind of nonsensical, really. Like, surely to test it, you would want each person to light it themselves instead of making me run around and light them all. Like, I could understand forcing me to give them logs. They wouldn't want to waste their current supply in case something did happen. But, like, yeah. I don't really see how this proves the network works when they should really be testing these guys' eyesight. Just makes sense to me. When I did the, um, the whatchamacallit, the, uh, I think it was only 10 for the ring of whatever gloves, whichever one's the higher number. Point is, I only used oak logs and I was fine. I'm not expecting any huge issues with this, but we'll see. Thing is, the last ones don't even have helpers. Like, the further we go, the less of them I can actually check with because they ha they're the ones that have extra things for the information. Like this guy, you just need like a prayer level. So, like, hey, look at that, they're all burning. Now we can use another teleport here to the mind altar if I can figure out which one is mined real quickly. This is a nice little convenience. Because uh, it's a lot closer to this than walking around, I suppose. And by a lot closer, I mean it saves like five seconds. <laughs> but we may need those five seconds. You never know. We're six minutes into this episode, though I did talk for the first bit. But anyway, um, back on subject, which is completely off topic for what we're doing right now. But uh, as far as achievements go, I'm not really achievement hunting on this account right now. That'll be something we do once I run out of quests. Then this will be all about like hunting collection logs, random statistics and achievements and all sorts of things. Basically anything that can be scored. That would be the goal of this channel after we finish getting our levels and getting our quests. Which will probably do both of those some um, next year, I would say. I would be surprised if by the end of next year I don't have a quest cape and a max cape. Right, why am I doing this? I could have teleported to Birth Hope faster than this. Maybe not so much faster now, but saving that run energy could, could maybe be important. I don't know. I think after this one, we have to teleport up to Trollheim. See, that's the other problem is, like, without being able to check on these ones, I won't know for sure if I've missed one. So I'm just going off memory right now. I have no indicator that I'm actually doing it right. This one, I would need to do a tale of two cats in order to have this guy help me. So it's obvious why I didn't bother trying to give him a macaw. Alright, so we do this. There we go. Alright, Trollheim teleport. Alright, now we gotta do this long run around here. It's gonna be one of these we have to climb down. I think it's that one right there. Down we go. I was trying to think of Thanksgiving related quests to do, and all I can think of would be like um bringing home the bacon and maybe like deadliest catch because they involve animals that you could eat. I don't know. I can't think of anything else that would fit. Really and truly, I can't. Being able to put the logs in first is so overpowered. Like, this would be an actual challenge if you had to bring the logs each time. But having it all preloaded is just like, whatever. Forcing people to do it is just annoying, honestly. Like, it'd be nice if you could just have the default regular logs in there without having to add them yourselves. So that then you could just do this thing. Because it's not like the XP is super amazing. That would be what I would do to this. I'd make it worth its while as a training method. You'd have to math it out too for how quickly you can do it. Like base it on like a 7 minute run. Which would be considered probably a pretty good run. Alright, are we going to have the level to still do this when we get up here? Will we have to do the thing? 
Oh, we're good. Okay, so now we're going to cabbage port away from this damaging effect where it becomes a problem. It's already taken us down to 87. We can go ahead and start preying on that while we head back up to Edgeville. This is now... There should only be three wilderness ones left, I believe. We can check with the guy in Edgeville when we get there. To also see how close we are. Now, I think it starts indicating we're close when you hit the five minute mark, which we should not be at for any of them, considering we're only 10 minutes in and the logs last more than 15 minutes. So we should be good. Yep, everything looks good. Three to go, just as expected. All right, actually the first one, we can just home teleport up to the wilderness volcano. And then you run west from there and that's where the first one is. Away we go. All right. Yeah, I don't know what to do for double XP weekend outside of fire making, really. It's the only skill I can think of that I'm really prepared to do in any, like, perpetual training method. I mean, obviously I can get Fishing 99, but I could get that right now. I could get that in two hours or something. I might get it. <laughs> This week, I need to, after all. Okay, this these are really obnoxious. They weren't this annoying earlier when I ran around to stock everything. I only got attacked by, like, one. Not an entire swarm of stupid, overly aggressive, magical unicorns. Uh, but yeah, not entirely sure. I feel like money skills like construction, herb lore, or summoning, or crafting even, would all be too expensive. Okay, we got a demon out here. There was a guy killing dragons here when I was here earlier. Okay, let's not get that close, please. I don't know if they're aggressive or not. A lot of things in the wilderness are. Alright, let's get up here. We should have plenty of time. Should be fine. I'm just gonna run straight north. I'm not gonna bother trying to randomize the um, teleport obelisks to get the one that's right next to the next one. Just because... We'd have to get all the way over there. Okay, come on, get down there. You can do it. Why is there such a delay on some of the things in this? I guess because it's old content. All right, so we run north. Where is my set? Very low percent. Uh, run replenish. That slowed me down. Well, that should get us all the way now. have to safely make the trip in the next, I don't know, we probably have like three, four minutes to get the last two. Shouldn't be a problem unless we get PK'd. Be pretty much a jerk thing to do, considering I'm not carrying anything that they can see. Why would they kill me? Except that I am wearing bright orange robes that anyone can see for miles away. That could lead to Oh gosh, blue dragons out here. Blue, because it's cold. And further north, I guess, than the green. Alright, here is second to last, the penultimate stop on our trip. One of the two that doesn't have a person at it. Although they could have put some interesting ice person here. Like, they have a polar bear at one of them, if you had been paying attention. I certainly wasn't. We're taking damage there. Ah, uh, we, we got up to 91 fire making already, so by the time we get up to this last one, we'll probably have the 92 we need. Probably. Oh gosh, don't attack that guy. Although it's like single combat up here, so it's not really that dangerous. I know that because when I was up here earlier, I wanted to just kill myself to get back, and I couldn't because having one of these guys fight me at a time would take too long. So I had to run all the way over to the portal thing and get south that way. All right, I always forget that it's actually just right here. All right, all 14, it's 14 beacons and we've got eight of them thing out of 12 that you can put one on. I need to remember that because I don't know if there's any way to check, right, what am I doing? I don't know if there's any way to check uh, which ones you've given them a cause to. So future note to self, I haven't done any of the item requiring ones except for the lava eel. 
I definitely won't remember this or know to check back in this episode. I could write it down in my notes, but whatever. Anyway, let's get south enough to teleport, which would be level 20 wilderness. If I didn't bring any amulet of glory or anything that would allow otherwise. Convenient. We got the same one I got last time I left. Funny how that RNG works out. I need to get the sword upgrade that lets me choose. I don't think we have that yet. I didn't bring the sword either way. I didn't think we had it. Oh, come on. Just get me to level 20 and then we'll cabbage port out. Now that we're in safety, we can home teleport once combat stops. Okay, combat stops. Uh, Verak. Let's go get the Inferno Adds, which is... I think it's equivalent to a Dragon Hatchet. Not a rune. So it's worse than my Crystal Hatchet, which sucks. But it'll be better for training fire making at Curly Roots. And I am eager to do that, because... I don't want to spend millions on fire making. I just don't. Like, I looked it up, and to get from, like, 100 fire making or so to 120 with, uh, I think with magic logs would be well over 100 million. I was looking that up for my main account, just because there are people there talking about it. How quick it is. Okay, we've had this conversation before. I'm here to claim my reward. For keeping all 14 beacons alight simultaneously, I present you with the Inferno Ads. Thank you very much. Thank you again, Kebab. Miss Lin is truly in your debt. Is there anything? You don't even, like, tell me about what it does? Hmm, that's weird. Anyway, there's the Inferno Ads. I always kind of liked it. I wish they would add an upgrade to it. Okay, that's... What is going on with its textures? That doesn't look right. That can't be what it's supposed to look like, right? It's just not loaded its textures or something. Because that is ugly. Okay, well, anyway, we have that. Now, um, I do kind of want to show off Livid Farm. I hate that thing so much. I spent... I don't know how many hours I spent on my main account at it, but more than I should have. Because I don't have any use for the spells, and that's the problem. Like, the XP's not great, it costs money to do overall, and the spells aren't, like, super amazing things for the most part. There's, like, one or two that are useful for some people, but not me. And a lot of them is just like, oh, teleport to North Ardoin. Oh, but we have unlimited teleports up there once you get to a decent level, thanks to the cloak. Plus, you have to be on Lunar and have the runes for it, so whatever. I got this from a medium parcel. That's about all there is to say about that. I also got this, I think, from the event. I don't remember. All right, but anyway, I was saying I wanted to show it off, and for that, I'm just going to grab all my runes, because I'm too lazy to look up which runes I need. I know I need, like, mud and awe and all that, depending on what you're doing. You need those things. We're going to have to switch to the Lunar Spellbook as well, just to show it off. Okay, I don't need the Steam Room. I know I don't need the Soul Rooms, so I'll get rid of this. But there's also, the reason we're doing this is that I've been buying these from the uh, good old merchant ship at the Deep Sea Fishing Platform. And they will allow us to skip part of Livid Farm training. And I probably will never do Livid Farm properly. I'll just try to remember to buy these whenever they become available. Which someone cracked the code on uh, the way they choose which thing is available which day. So you can look up future ones. And I should really just like set up an alarm that reminds me on those days. There's like a huge gap, I think, where you don't get any as well. And I think we're probably in that gap right now. It's been a week or two since I got one. Okay, it's never the direction I think it is to get out of this town. Alright, so we need to go switch to the Lunar Spellbook. Which is another annoyance. Like, it'd be a huge quality of life for me if they'd let you switch to Lunar over there. Like, that should be a Fremenic, um hard tasks reward or something. That you can switch spellbooks over there. Just because, you know... 
if you want to just hop over here and do a little bit of live and farm, you know, do it in small bursts because it's less annoying. You have to come all the way over here or tra change it in the other way. There's like the the Elven Grimoire or whatever, I think, over in uh, Riff. But uh, this is the way I'm doing it. I don't switch spells enough to have like all the methods ingrained in my mind is like, oh, I'm switching spells, I need to go to Prif now. Like, oh, I need Lunar spells, and I'm going to Lunar Island? Well, let's just go to the Lunar place. Why not? Uh, it doesn't let you use these until you do this, which is why we're doing this. To explain why this episode is a double feature of minigames instead of just one. I want this out of my bank. Alright, let's talk. What's going on here? I've livid to cure, fences to fix, patches to fertilize, I'm exhausted and... Hold on, hold on, take a deep breath and start from the beginning. Sorry, this farming is so new to me. A while ago, I was approached by the dashing and brave Lokar Sea Runner. Dashing and brave? I might be thinking of a different guy. A pirate who tarry... Oh, who ferried I... I thought that was a T. Who ferried me to a pirate ship. No, that sounds right. In a courageous trip to Karamja, he came across a funny chap called Papa Mambo. Lokar obtained some saplings from a vine that grows in the region and brought them to me. He wanted me to grow um, and enhance the vine using my magic. We did an experiment on one sapling and quickly discovered that magic enhanced the tenacious attrib attributes of the plant. Lokar named them Livid. Livid? Yes, it likely stands for something clever, but it is clearly quite livid. Hmm, I might have to pay a visit to Lokar. I shudder to think what he might be using this livid for. Don't mean mean. He has admiral intentions. He plans to transport what I grew to Chieftain Brunt to help protect their village from wild beasts. Against wild beasts? The livid do sound vicious, I suppose. They definitely are. They have a mind of their own, and they carry on living even when cut from their roots. In exchange for the plants, Chieftain Brunt is kindly giving the Moon Clan some trade produce. You know, I just realized I'd completely forgotten this entire little story, and nothing seems to ever come of it, right? Although I've not done the latest Remnant quest ever, so... I don't know, maybe they have livid in that one. Probably not. So how can I help out on your farm? Let me show you. Great, we get to tutorialize. There are a variety of tasks you can help me out with here. You can do them in any order, or just focus on individual tasks if you want. If you don't perform the tasks, I will eventually advance the farm on it to its next stage, but don't expect any reward. First, there's fertilizing patches. I've buried saplings in these patches, and they will need fertilizing to appear. So cast the fertilized soil spell on the patch. Then the livid will grow, and you'll get further knowledge in magic and farming. Eventually, the livid will mature but you will see that my plants get diseased quite often. It seems they are susceptible to the parasites native to this isle. Cast the cure plant spell on the crop, and after a little refinement, bingo, the livid is fine, and magic and farming experience are yours. It's really tiring running this farm, so sometimes I'll need some help. Simply give me a few encouraging words, and I'll be able to draw upon your run energy, making me right as rain. In exchange, you'll receive some experience and agility, I can recover slowly by myself, but your assistance would be much appreciated. Once I harvest the livid, I'll teleport it over to the produce pile. It is here that you can grab up to 10 livid and bunch them together with string using the string jewelry spell. Then place the bunched produce in the trade wagon with the last step. You'll get experience in magic and crafting. Why is there a big pile of lumber I hear you ask? Our fences often get into a state of disrepair. I'm not sure if it's the pesky... Sukwa or the sea breeze, but the wood doesn't last very long here. Pick up some lunar lumber from the corner of the farm and use the plank make spell to turn them into fence posts. Oh my gosh. Then use the post on the broken fence. You'll get magic and construction experience for your effort upon affixing the post. I just accidentally pressed tab. So there you have it. Yeah, you get into a rhythm with this. So you'll know like what to do on each step, but uh, we're not at that state. So yeah, now we got plants growing here. We can just try it out real quick before we actually do the thing. It's all pretty simple stuff, you know, you can... It takes two logs to repair a thing, so... Oh wait, we have to convert it. Fence posts. Okay, where am I going? 
Apparently making logs doesn't stop you from running. But yeah, you can make two, get a little bit of experience, zero XP per hour. You can do that. Oh no, it only takes one. I thought it used to take two. Did they change it? Or is, oh, it's two per turn, right? Duh. That's what I was thinking. Anyway, yeah, for curing, you just do this. You choose which one it looks like, and it's kind of hard with some of them. Like this one, specifically, is a hard one. Speed's not that one. Speed that one, right? Yeah. The three ones are easy, and the small ones are easy, but that one, not so easy. Yeah, and then you run over here. I'm doing this all wrong. Yeah, you run over here, and you can, uh, where is it? Oh, it's the same image. Yeah, five of those make one of those. You can click them both. There's really no waiting. You can do all these things real fast together. You don't have to wait around. And then there's encouraging. Gives a little bit of experience there. Yeah, that's like most of the basic things. Like little random things will happen where she'll have to do something and you'll have to use some other runes on her and then she'll reward you with runes and stuff. But that was all the basic things. You know, you do that, do that, you do that. And you deposit there and all that. But anyway, let's go ahead. First of all, how many did we get from that? 400 produce points. Okay. Now we have 38,770. Now we have 58,190. It is random how many you get between a certain range. Now we have 95,000. So that should be, what, two spells unlocked? Uh, yeah, we got Teleport to South Falador. You will learn. Hooray! And then we will learn Repair Rune Pouch. I'm never going to use ever, unless some update makes them something I would want to use. And now the next one we get should get us teleport to North Ardoin, which was one that I used to be excited about, but not so much. Now, as far as useful ones go, I think remote farming is the only one that I could ever see myself using, but thanks to player-owned farms, I just don't see myself using it. They would have to update it to where you could, like, check your pins and stuff from anywhere, then I might use it. But that would be a lot of work, I think. But yeah... For um, the completion escape, we do have to get all the way here, which will cost a good amount of money. Those livid plants aren't cheap. In fact, let me look up how much they cost. Livid plant. For some reason, whenever I search on wikis, a lot of time the first character doesn't show up. Really annoying. They give 10,000 to 40,000 livid farm points, and they cost 1 million coins. I consider it worth it. Once you subtract the cost of the runes for doing it, the cost isn't that bad. And, you know, you need anywhere from uh, 43 of them to uh, 11. Right? Yeah. That would be the range if you had extremely bad or good RNG. So realistically, you're looking maybe like 20-something of them, 20 million, to skip all of this time wasted. And this is a lot of time, even on the double produce points weekends it still sucks so i don't know if i'll ever actually do this now that they've got the livid plants i'll just spend my money when the time comes which we could look here since i'm just wasting time anyway today um they have unfocused damage enhancers and a crystal triskelion great where is the list of upcoming ones I want to see when the next Livid Plant is. Just curiosity. The 23rd of November. So yeah, this is the big break in between them, I think. No, but then after that, there's not another one until the 22nd of December. And then the 31st. And then the 15th of January. 26th of January. And the 30th of January. 7th of February. And the 14th of February. Oh, Valentine's Day. So basically, yeah. Don't expect me to get all of this done in the next 100 days, even if I did get all of them. But we will get there eventually. It's not like I'll be ready for the completion cape in 100 days anyway. And if I was, I would just power through whatever was left. It'd be a lot better than doing the whole thing, though. Scratch, that is for sure. So notice my prayer is still on. Just to turn it off. I'll just recharge it anyway. But yeah, um, that is this. Uh, next up, we'll be doing a quest. I'm not entirely sure what quest. 
I think there was a quest I was talking about doing recently, but I don't know for sure. I kind of want to get some of these low-level quests out of the way, so we might just do, like, one of these two. Or something else, I don't know. There's a lot of quests to do. And some of them are quite low level to be done. Because there's no reason some of them aren't done. Some of them I have reasons, you know. Some of them though. It's like, why haven't I done Quiet Before the Swarm? I don't know. Genuinely, no idea why I haven't done this yet. I can tell you why I haven't done, um... I don't know. The World Wakes has all this suggested requirements. Yeah. That took a little longer to figure one out that I haven't done for a reason. Because a lot of those, there really is no reason why I haven't done them. They don't have bosses. You know, the boss ones is like, all hidden behind the quests that I've already chosen not to do, like Desert Treasure. So, once I do Desert Treasure and stuff, it'll open up more quests that I don't want to do. But I don't want to do Desert Treasure because of the uh, Dominion Tower. Anyway, though, that that's enough on that. I'll see you guys next time with a quest. Just gotta figure out what it'll be.